Hi dear friends and subscribers, welcome to your Sunday's edition of the Cricket Happening Show with your host Ram today. Well, I know that your, uh, your dear friends and subscribers have been uh, finding some problems with the, uh, the audio which is coming in, but you know, give me some time, I've not been getting time to actually see and I do realize that there is some problem with the uh, mic here. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll try to rectify it, but please be patient enough uh, and I'll do it and especially the reddit who have been so cooperative and who have actually I got a lot of subscribers from them. Thank you very much and for you people well you also please be patient I will be there uh, to rectify this problem uh, and then finally we will get things going Okay, so you please bear with me here. Thank you. Uh, well dear friends and subscribers first yesterday I told you uh, when India and Pakistan are out there in the middle, it is a total war. Yes, it was. And what a match we had. I mean, I would say cricket was the winner. Even though Pakistan won the match, look at what. This is normally uh, what happens uh, in uh, India-Pakistan clashes. Uh, it all comes down to the wire. Uh, you feel like uh, things are going on serenely and suddenly a clatter of wickets and then we see the excitement reach fever pitch. And that's what precisely happened here at the Shere Bangla National Stadium here in Mirpur, where Pakistan prevailing over India. Uh, I mean, they won by only one wicket with just two balls remaining, and it was all thanks in the main to Shahid Afridi, who just facing just two balls. In fact, they needed uh, 10 runs uh, of the last over, but Shahid Afridi saw to it that uh, there were no more balls required. In the sense, he made sure uh, that. Um, uh, he, he is the one who is going to take Pakistan to victory and it was a real pressure cooker situation because see, that number 11 batsman was at the crease, Junaid Khan, uh, immediately took a single and gave um, uh, Shahid Afridi the strike and Shahid Afridi the experienced player uh, put all his might into it and hit uh, once, uh, in, in fact they needed uh, 10 runs uh, but the first ball that Shahid Afridi faced after Junaid Khan gave him the strike uh, that went soaring over the bigger dose. It was tremendous force over extra cover. Ravi Chandra Nashwin was the bowler and the ball sailed into the stands. That was the first one. And the second one, now Shahid Afridi, that is what Shahid Afridi has been renowned for. Uh, the tremendous force that he imparts to the, uh, to the stroke that he plays. And that's what he did. He actually had miscued that stroke, stroke and the ball actually flew over long on and the Indian captain Virat Kohli and everybody were watching the flight of the ball whether it would probably get into the fielder's hands but not, not uh, I mean, uh, not at all. It went sailing into the crowd and that was all. The match was all clinched by Shahid Afridi uh, in the two balls that he faced and that, that set. He, he contributed a quick fire 34 of just 18 deliveries um, and uh, he actually clinched the match for Pakistan. But as I said, but what was good was that it was real excitement at fever pitch because the because at one time one felt that India were might India might win the match. At one time one felt Pakistan will the match. Again, this kept on happening, and finally Pakistan were the uh, uh, proud victors, uh, winning the match by one wicket, and that virtually I would say uh, shuts out India uh, from the race uh, for the Asia Cup. Uh, well, let's. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with the excitement. I'm going to take you down to the um, excitement uh, first, uh, first up, and see what happened. Okay, I'll take you down to the 48th over. In the 48th over, uh, I mean, as you know, India made 245, and Pakistan needed. Uh, um, I mean, at the end of over 48, Pakistan was 233 for six. So they required uh, 13 runs to actually win the match. And Bhuvneshwar Kumar was the bowler. Now Bhuvneshwar Kumar. Uh, one has to really commend him. In fact, he bowled a good over because I normally, uh, you know, Bhuvneshwar Kumar has this ability that uh, we have seen that in the slog overs he continues to leak runs. So the 49th over was given to Bhuvneshwar Kumar and Bhuvneshwar Kumar, the first ball that he bowled to Umar Gul, he took a run. And uh, things are looking pretty much under control because Pakistan that scored uh, red 233 for six, 13 runs required. Umar Gul was uh, striking the ball well. He hit a six also in the previous over. And then Shahid Afridi, the experienced player, was there. But look at what happened. This is what cricket is all about. This is what really builds in the excitement. At 233 for six, 13 runs required. Uh, I, I mean, anybody, it, it, anybody would have said that Pakistan are going to take it, especially with Shahid Afridi at the crease. But look at what happened. Uh, in fact, uh, Babur Kumar in the 49th over, 
Uh, first, the first ball is that he bowled Umar Gul. Uh, that was uh, one, he got a single. Uh, Gul actually uh, hit it to long on, long off, and actually went off for a single. So Shahid Afridi came on strike. Uh, what uh, Shahid Afridi did is he actually whipped Bhuneshwar Kumar to mid wicket and took a single. So Umar Gul came back on strike, and uh, Umar Gul, uh, what he did is he actually got a length delivery and he actually uh, tried to uh, lock the ball. But the ball actually took the bottom of the bat, bottom of the blade of the bat, and the ball flew in the air. And uh, you know, Ajinkya Rahane, judging the catch very well, took a low catch. And so Pakistan were 235 for seven. After that, Mohammad Tala, as you know, he was making his debut. He had a good, um, uh, I would say, good round with the ball because on his debut he had figures of seven overs, one maiden, two for 22. And uh, Mohammad Tala came in and joined Shahid Afridi. Now, uh, because Umar Gul had actually played the stroke, uh, Shahid Afridi had gone to the striker's end. Now, Bhuneshwar Kumar bowled a beautiful Yorker, uh, which, um, which Shahid Afridi uh, definitely dug it out, but it went to Virat Kohli uh, and there was no run. And after that, uh, there was a one leg by conceded by Shahid Afridi and this brought Mohamed Tala onto strike. Now, Mohamed Tala, uh, I mean, uh, I mean that, was, uh, that, that was something uh, that really showed some inexperience, no doubt about it, because uh, considering the fact that, you know, uh, Mohamed Tala was playing, is making his debut. He was playing his first ball in One Day International cricket uh, in international one, uh, first One Day International. Uh, the first delivery itself that Bhuneshwar Kumar bowled, uh, what Tala did was a length ball, no doubt about it. Uh, he he actually uh, tried to give himself room outside the length stump and tried to slam it over the top through the offside. And look at what happened. Uh, uh, Ravindra Jadeja at the fence took this catch. And that was a very irresponsible stroke. But, uh, you know, I'm sure Mohamed Tala will learn with experience. That was his first outing, the first One Day International. In fact, he play, play, playing his first delivery uh, in, uh, in One Day International cricket. And he actually uh, gave it a catch. And suddenly, uh, after Umar Gul fell in the over, uh, on that over, uh, Bhuneshwar Kumar also got the wicket of Mohamed Tala. And suddenly, there was a lot of pressure on Pakistan with the score on 236 for 8. And in walked in. Uh, Saeed Ajmal. Now Saeed Ajmal uh, came in and um, uh, he actually had to face Ashwin because uh, the over was completed and uh, finally it all came down to the wire. The final over, the crowds were on the edge of their seats. The Indian, um, uh, the Indian fans were really, really, uh, you know, probably praying uh, that they will win. The Pakistan crowd was also praying. It was very good to see on the television that that was happening. And uh, Ravi Chandran Ashwin was uh, kept for the final over. Uh, by Virat Kohli and Ravi Chandran Ashwin. The first delivery he bowled, he actually fooled um, uh, Saeed Ajmal down the left side uh, and uh, Ajmal actually trying to sweep the ball which was a carom delivery. Uh, it went on, went on to hit the stumps. He missed it and uh, it actually went on to take the middle stump. And suddenly uh, there was a real trouble and real uh, pressure on Pakistan with the score reading 236 for 9 with number 11 batsman as I said Junaid Khan walking in and Junaid Khan of the second ball took a single and after that try the free came on strike now for India uh, uh, what would have happened was that probably one would have expected that Junaid Khan should have been on strike and Virat Kohli did whatever uh, he could as a captain to, so, to see to it that um, you know Junaid Khan was kept on strike but Shai the Fridi, uh, but Junaid Khan uh, very smartly uh, got a carom ball, but he actually dabbed it towards square leg, and actually took a single, and that brought Afridi on to strike. And once Afridi came on strike, he, Afridi did not want to waste any more time. There were still four balls left, but Afridi said, Afridi decided that uh, there is no more time wastage, uh, and you know he has played a lot of, um, he, had, he was he had played very maturely until then. And even after that, and also in a very, very intelligent manner, and now he decided that enough was enough, and he is not going to wait for the four balls. As you know, Afridi, uh, his, his mindset is such. And what he did is, actually, he, uh, Ashwin bowled to him, and uh, Afridi beautifully hit that over extra cover boundary for the six. And let me tell you, there was a lot of, uh, uh, what do you call, a lot of force into that stroke. Uh, it was hit with tremendous force uh, by Shahid Afridi. The bat speed was absolutely uh, tremendous there and it went over the extra cover boundary for a six. So that once again the Pakistani fans were really really started rejoicing, they were dancing because um, then the equation uh, really came down uh, to only four runs to win and Shahid Afridi in the very next delivery uh, cleared the long on boundary. In fact, um, 
what he did was that particular stroke, if you, if, if you look at the video, you'd see that Shahid Afridi, uh, again, Ravichandran Ashwin bowled this delivery, and actually it was, an, it was not, it, I mean, Shahid Afridi had played it with tremendous stroke, as you know, he has, uh, he, he packs a lot of punch in his strokes, and Afridi had actually gone full tilt at it, and the ball had actually taken the edge, but look at the force, look, look at the power that Afridi has, that particular edge actually carried the ball over the uh, long on boundary for a sex and it was all over. Shai Dafridi was the hero by hitting two sixes of the two balls that he faced in the final over of Ashwin and that's it. With two balls to spare and with one wicket to spare uh, Pakistan winning the match by one wicket against India in this, um, in this match that is the sixth match of the Asia Cup and what a win I would say Pakistan were proud victors. So since I had to cover the excitement, what I'm going to do, I'm going to give a brief run of what exactly happened. Uh, well, India were the ones who actually batted first. Uh, they put up 245 for 8 or 50 overs. Uh, it was, uh, but uh, I thought India defended the score pretty well because it was not a very good score. 245 was not considered a good score on this pitch. Uh, but um, as far as India were concerned, for India, Rohit Sharma played a very aggressive knock. He was, uh, he was completely in his element and he in fact hit Umar Gul for two sixes and he was looking pretty powerful uh, through the offside and Rohit Sharma was playing so well that you know I, I, I am sure uh, that uh, Pakistan would have been so happy when they got their wicket because uh, Rohit Sharma contributed a very aggressive 56 of 58 balls with 7 fours and 2 sixes. Shikhar Dhawan was the man was, who was the first to go. It was LBW bowled Mohamed Afiz for 10 uh, and Mohamed Afiz was given the ball uh, as you know every time a left-hander comes in Mohamed Afiz always uh, is trusted by Ms. Baul Haq to take the wickets and that's what he precisely delivered. Uh, Virat Kohli was uh, di dismissed cheaply by Umar Gul for 5, caught behind. Um, Ajinkya Rahane contributed 23 or 50 balls to 3 fours, and then it was India were under really, really under pressure because the bowling was very good. In fact, Mohamed Afiz bowled 9 overs, no made in 2 for 38. Umar Gul was a bit costly because he got some tap from Ravindra Jadeja who contributed an unbeaten 52 of 49 balls, 4 fours and 2 sixes. Two fifties for India, one is from Ambati Raidu, uh, who definitely showed a lot of potential here uh, by really, really uh, trying to uh, rescue this Indian innings and making 58 of 62 balls with 4 fours and 1 six. Uh, Ravindra Jadeja towards the end uh, flourished, uh, flourished as he is normally uh, known to do it. He contributed 52 of uh, 49 balls with 4 fours and 2 sixes. Uh, Dinesh Karthik made 23 of 46 balls with 1 four, uh, and then 245 for 8 was the final score for India. Uh, but uh, at least India did, definitely did well to get to that score, uh, thanks to Ravindra Jadeja Ambati Raidu. And uh, Junaid Khan bowled 7 also made a none for 44. Uh, Fridi, uh, the spinners were the ones who really, really ruled the roost. Look, look at the way the spinners bowled. Mohamed Afiz, 9 overs, 2 for 38. Saeed Ajmal, uh, absolutely unbeatable in the sense nobody can really. Uh, the last time that I saw Saeed Ajmal being manhandled uh, was by Michael Hussey of Australia, who is a retired person from uh, retired from Australian uh, from international cricket now, with four sixes. Uh, I think it was in the T20 World Cup. Uh, but other than that, Saeed Ajmal could not be handled by anybody. And 10 was 40 on 3 wickets. Saeed Afridi also uh, didn't complete his full quota, but nevertheless bowled pretty well. 8 overs for 38. And uh, Mohamed Tala on his one day international debut, I thought he bowled excellently. 7 overs on maiden, 22 runs and 2 wickets. And uh, Junaid Khan, 7 overs for 44 runs. So India actually made 245, but um, uh, 245 was not considered a very good score on this particular pitch. Uh, and for Pakistan, they got a wonderful start from their um, openers, uh, Sharji Khan and Ahmed uh, uh, Shahzad, who played um, absolutely brilliantly. In fact, look at what they did. They gave such a, a strong uh, partnership, a very a strong partnership, and that too, they were going over the asking rate. They were almost going at a clip of 6.5 runs per over when the run rate that was required was only 4.90. Sharji Khan playing some very good pull shots, and Ahmed Shahzad playing some brilliant strokes. I mean, his stroke was, uh, I would say, uh, as far as Shahjil Khan was concerned, it was uh, very good uh, pull strokes, uh, very good drives, but Ahmed Shahzad, let me tell you, he was playing some exquisite strokes. He was threading the ball through the offside, 
uh, he was uh, playing with lots of poise and perfection his timing was impeccable and Ahmed Shahzad according to me was looking very good today in his knock of 42 or 44 balls with 6 fours. Uh, Mohamed Afiz uh, was the man of the match for his uh, 75 runs so that is what really enabled because Mohamed Afiz contributed 75 runs of 117 balls with 3 fours and 2 sixes. Uh, Ms. Baal Haq once again uh, was run out for one. Uh, Umar Akmal um, even though he was the form player uh, he definitely failed against India was out for four and then uh, they required some, someone to actually stay with Mohamed Afiz now Sohib Maksud uh, definitely showed what a talented player he is in the sense uh, he at least uh, you know he, he, uh, he definitely gave good support to Mohamed Afiz uh, in contributing and all this came in handy at the end as you know because it enabled Shahid Afridi to finish off the match uh, in, a, in a very flashy style uh, Sohib Maksud contributing 38 of 53 balls with two fours and one six um, and uh, Shahid Afridi as I said he made a quick fire uh, unbeaten 34 of just 18 deliveries two fours and three sixes we definitely saw the real old Shahid Afridi in action and that is something which Pakistan would be very happy about because normally Shahid Afridi doesn't play um, doesn't really play second fiddle but here uh, he really really played in a very intelligent manner and when it came to the final over he decided that he is not going to allow um, um, Ravi Chandran Ashwin to complete his um, uh, six balls and he is going to complete it within uh, 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 complete it on the uh, two balls that he is going to face and that's what he precisely did by dismissing them for sixes. Uh, Umar Gul also had a hand uh, in providing a free support making 12 of 12 balls uh, and then uh, as you know I already talked about the wickets. As far as the Indian bowling was concerned Bhuneshwar Kumar, uh, 10 overs, no made in 2 for 56. I thought he bowled well in the slog overs, especially the 49th over. He gave only, only 3 runs, so that was uh, something good for India. Uh, Mohamed Shami, uh, 10 overs, no made in 9 for 49. Uh, was not looking um, uh, pretty good today, unfortunately. Ashwin was uh, um, uh, pretty good, 9.4 overs, no made in 44 runs and 3 wickets. Uh, he was looking very good till such time Afridi slammed him for 2 sixes of 2 consecutive balls to get Pakistan victory. Uh, Ravindra Jadeja uh, was costly 10 overs on and 9 for 61 but Amit Mishra um, today who was included in place of Stuart Binney uh, did a very good in fact um, you know Amit Mishra when he came on that is the time the run started drying up for Pakistan and the pressure started building up and you know the, the wickets also started falling and Amit Mishra bowled 10 overs no made and 2 for 28 his bowling figures and he bowled splendidly Mohamed Afiz was named man of the match so as I said the majority of the cricket broadcast went to so, to Pakistan so as I said tomorrow there is another match which is coming up and that is between Afghanistan and Sri Lanka which is coming up tomorrow uh, okay so now I'm going to get you on to the Newlands Cape Town where the uh, second test match uh, where the final test match on day two uh, with uh, rain actually uh, preventing a full day's play on the on day two um, Australia um, are really consolidating their position um, after starting on the overnight score of 322 uh, finishing at 494 for 7 uh, for Australia Michael Clark once again plowed on uh, and this time he was stranded on 99 for quite some time uh, but finally got to his century now that is something that everybody were waiting for that Michael Clark uh, should get a, I mean should uh, it was a long time since Michael Clark got a century and hit some good form and here he was Michael Clark contributing at the end of the day he was undefeated on 161 runs with 17 fours uh, that, that really tells you in fact Kyle Abbott today uh, yesterday it was Moni Morkel who troubled him but today it was Kyle Abbott who kept him really quiet in those uh, in those 90s uh, and uh, one thing that um, Australia benefited from according to me is Dale Steen has not been able to bowl uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure um, Australia would have been all out if Dale Steen would have been bowling because Dale Steen had just bowled 10.1 overs in the whole match no maidens 44 runs in one weekend after that he has not come on to bowl so that is not good news for South Africa so South Africa were definitely, definitely crippled uh, by losing their main spearhead face spearhead Dale Steen and uh, that's enabled Australia to finish at 494 for 7 Michael Clark at close of play was not out on 161 with 17 fours uh, definitely looking out for a double century now and uh, one thing about Michael Clark is that he has come back in a strong way. A lot of critics were uh, criticism was going on that Michael Clark is in some awful form. He has not been contributing, and here he comes, almost now, uh, probably eyeing a double century tomorrow. Uh, Stephen Smith uh, he contributed 84 uh, with nine fours and three sixes. Uh, Shane Watson uh, played in a very very I would say in his uh, very aggressive way 
uh, to make 40 runs of uh, 32 balls with two fours and three sixes. Brand Haddon continued his very poor form in this uh, in this particular Test series uh, by uh, it is like a high and a low. He was on a high against England in the Ashes series, and here Brand Haddon uh, is on a considerable uh, low, and he was out for 13 of uh, with two fours. Uh, Mitchell Johnson was out for not, and Ryan Harris uh, was giving company to um, to uh, Michael Clark. Uh, when stumps were drawn for the second day, not out on four. And uh, the only thing that I would like to say here as far as the bowling is concerned, uh, the wickets, uh, as you know, yesterday only three wickets were gone. Today, uh, the four wickets uh, which went were three wickets went to J.P. Dumini, the right arm of spinner. 17 overs no made in 73 runs and four wickets for him. And Dean Elgar, 22 overs no made in one for 99. Uh, the pace bowlers did not get any wicket. Philander, 26.4 overs, two made in 116 runs and one wicket. Mone Morkel 23.5 overs, 2 maidens, 94 runs, and no wicket. Uh, Kyle Abbott, uh, 28 overs, 11 maidens, done for 68. In fact, the whole burden came on Kyle Abbott, uh, the new bowler, who had to really, really take on the burden uh, in the absence of uh, the uh, South African uh, pace bowlers. Uh, and then Dean Elgar, uh, 22 overs, no maiden, 1 for 99. So uh, that is as far as the match between Australia and South Africa are concerned. Uh, two, two, uh, two days gone, uh, the third day is yes, uh, probably, I mean, one, one is sure that uh, Michael Clark uh, would be eyeing a double century. Well, let's, uh, let's look at the cricket update now. I'm taking you down live to the uh, match between West Indies. There's a cricket update coming in, and I will see if I can. Uh, in, in fact, I, I would be in a position to give you. In fact, I'm sure English fans who are watching this uh, a particular broadcast of mine would be very happy to know that England are on the verge of leveling this series with the West Indies here. West Indies making 159 of 44.2 overs. They were all out in 44.2 overs. This is the second one day international being played uh, between West Indies and England at North Sound and Antigua. And England, who were really, really struggling, and West Indies did well to defend this total. And here I see that England are 158 for 7. We are in the 44th over. And just one run. Uh, they just require two runs to win and one to actually equal. So I can give some cricket commentary. And as, as Sammy comes in, uh, the, the persons who are uh, right now in the middle is uh, Ravi Bopara. In fact, this partnership has uh, done a great deal for uh, England because England was struggling at one stage at 105 for 7 uh, in the 32nd over. And here uh, we see the, the, the captain of the uh, the English team, Stuart Broad is not out on 24 of 41 balls with two fours, but Ravi Bopara is not out on 37 of 57 balls with four fours, as we see Dan and Sammy uh, getting ready uh, to bowl to Stuart Broad. So just two runs for England to actually level this one three three match one day into uh, one uh, three match one day international series here as uh, one is waiting for Dan and Sammy to come in and bowl to Broad. Well, the, still England have to wait here as uh, Broad once again. Uh, gets a ball which he actually pulls the ball uh, down to the square leg region but it goes straight down to the fielder and uh, England have to still wait for the victory so two more runs to get for England in the meanwhile I'm just going to keep the commentary going and uh, and then I will go on and I'll give you uh, the summary as to what West Indies did for West Indies Lendy Simmons was the highest scorer so he continued his consistent form uh, he contributed 70 yard runs and for England uh, well uh, I would say this partnership is the one uh, which has really saved face for them because they were really, really struggling. Because considering that Disney has made only 159, uh, and uh, and once again, well, <laughs> well, I think uh, England have to really, really wait because uh, this this was the final delivery which was delivered by uh, Dan and Sammy to Broad, uh, and um, well, there is no run at all uh, because what happened was that this was a delivery at which uh, Stuart Broad uh, tried to have a real swish at it. And he actually missed it, and the wicketkeeper behind the stumps uh, collected it, and England have to still wait. So now we'll be seeing probably it's going to be. In fact, Wayne Bravo has completed his quota. Uh, 10 overs, no maiden, uh, one maiden, 41 runs and two wickets. Darren Sammy has bowled four overs for 19, and we are getting into the 44th over. So, so basically, uh, it's a matter of uh, just two runs required. Uh, with uh, but uh, well, the overs, uh, there are a lot of overs. There are six overs still left for 36 balls. Uh, uh, are still left for England to win, and uh, only it's a matter of only uh, when that is going to happen. Just two runs to get, uh, but uh, one is just waiting to see uh, who is going to be actually. Uh, as in fact, uh, it has been Dwayne Smith has been given the ball to bowl as Dwayne Smith comes in and delivers the first delivery. It's a full length delivery on the stumps, uh, as um, is uh, Bopara, who actually uh, has uh, just turned it round uh, to the mid wicket region. 
Uh, but let me tell you, absolutely no run. So the score still stays on 158 for seven. And and finally, Bopara, you know, the second delivery from Dwayne Smith, uh, drives it square on the offside and actually has leveled the scores for England. Bopara has moved on to 38. And now England are level with West Indies on 159. And it's just a matter of one stroke and England would be leveling this uh, one-day series against West Indies. As uh, I'm still waiting... Uh, for the third delivery to be bowled, Dwayne Smith is walking back on the top of his bowling run-up, rubbing the ball on his trousers, uh, and he's getting ready to bowl as the fielders settle. The umpires are still, there's some still some fielding adjustment going on. So we are still waiting for Dwayne Smith as Dwayne Smith comes in, passes umpire and bowls to Stuart Broad. Now Stuart Broad, well, again, he can't get any single here as he drives, but, uh, well, he, def um, he, he tried to drive, and he actually missed the delivery. The wicket keeper behind the stumps uh, collects the delivery. So we are still waiting. One more, one more stroke, one run, and it's all over. The match would be all over. So just waiting for the winning run to be scored, and then I will be giving you a full summary, a uh, general summary of uh, what uh, what West Indies made, and I mean in the sense who are the players who played, and for England who played. So I'm just waiting. So that's the nice reason I'm just you know continuing this cricket commentary as uh, Dwayne Smith uh, is once again uh, getting on. In fact, uh, the next delivery too, uh, Stuart Broad is not able to get any run because he drives well, but again, the ball is going straight to the fielder at cover and England have to wait for the victory run. Well, once again, uh, Dwayne Smith is going down. That's all over. Dwayne Smith bowls to Broad. Broad has hit that for a boundary. It's all over. England have won the match. England have leveled the one-day international series against West Indies uh, by by taking uh, having a three-wicket win over uh, West Indies at North Sound in Antigua. It's all over. Broad has taken his score on to 28. England 163 for seven. Stuart Broad 28 not out of 46 balls with three fours. Ravi Bopara 38 not out of 59 balls with four fours, taking England to victory. The partnership and unbeaten 58 runs for the eight wicket taking England to victory. So let's go and let's now, uh, before I actually leave this cricket happening show, uh, let me just give you a brief uh, rundown of what happened. West Indies made 159 batting first. They were all out in 44.2 overs. The highest scorer being Lady Simmons with 70 of 98 balls with four fours and two sixes. Uh, 20 coming in from Dwayne Bravo. There was a little controversy whether Dwayne Bravo was out. He was given stumped out, stumped by Butler of the balling Fredwell. There was a lot of controversy going on whether Bravo was out. Uh, now that will all come uh, once again to the fore because uh, the reason being that West Indies have lost. Uh, that question might once again come in whether Dwayne Bravo uh, was really out or was he given out. And uh, uh, well, other than that, um, other than that, the only persons who reached double figures were Darren Bravo with 13 of 34 balls, with one six. Uh, Kieran Powell contributing 16 of 20 balls, two fours. Other than that, there is a phone number. Dwayne Smith out for five. Kieran Kickard which contributed on nine. And then Darren Samuels out for three. Ramadin five. Miller two. Not out. Nareen 4 and Ram Paul 1. Let's look at the bowling figures. Today we had uh, the, the, uh, the most successful bowler was the left arm spinner from England, uh, Stephen Parry, who, was, uh, who made his one day international double and I thought he bowled excellently. 10 overs, 1 maiden, 32 runs and he took 3 wickets. Uh, Treadwell, 9.2 overs, 2 maiden, 39 runs and 2 wickets. So the, the spinners were the ones who actually took most of the wickets. Um, and uh, yes, Joe Root took 2 wickets, 5 overs, no maiden, 2 15. So basically 7 wickets were taken by the spinners. Uh, Broad, 8 overs, no maiden, 1 for 25. 3 overs for 11 runs for Mohin Ali uh, with 1 wicket to his name. Bresnan bowled 5 overs, 2 maidens, 1 for 13. But far, uh, I'm not going to get into that. Let's talk about the Englands. As far as England chasing a very a low total of 160 to win, uh, really, really uh, faltered in the chase. They really struggled. Uh, Michael Lum, uh, the Centurion, uh, the debut Centurion, um, actually in the first one, the international, uh, contributing 39 of 60 balls with three fours. Moin Ali was out for 10 of 16 balls with one four. Luke Wright was out for a blob. Uh, Joe Root contributed 23 or 43 balls, two fours, and then suddenly there's some, there's some wickets. In fact, um, uh, England went from 29 for one to 30 for two. They were 79 for three. They were 81 for four, uh, 81 for five, 89 for six, and 105 for seven. So, so that that was the time that um, I, I thought West Indies uh, had exerted a lot of pressure on England, and it was uh, really uh, something was required, and that came in the form of. Um, um, Ravi Bopara and uh, Stuart Broad 
actually putting on an unbeaten uh, 58 run partnership to take them home. So 163 for 7. Look at the bowling figures. Uh, Dwayne Bravo 10 was on made in 241. Ram Paul 10 was no made in 1 for 40. Uh, Nareen uh, once again bowling very uh, very well and also in a very economical manner. 10 was on made in 1 for 25. Nikita Miller who was included today, the left arm spinner, 10 was on made in 28 runs and 2 wickets. Sammy Bowl 4 was for 19 and Dwayne Smith. Uh, bowling that last over uh, in which England got the victory, uh, just bowled five balls and five runs were taken off that. Well, dear fans, uh, friends and subscribers, hope uh, you all loved my uh, cricket happening show today because I just wanted to take you down to the excitement of the India-Pakistan uh, game. I also uh, tried my bit at some a little cricket commentary as far as England and West Indies were concerned and then, I, as I said, I also looked at the Australia. So tomorrow, once again, I'll be back. Uh, it will be the Afghanistan versus Sri Lanka match which is coming up. This is the seventh match at the Asia Cup 2014 which is coming up tomorrow. And also we'll have the third day's play between Australia and South Africa. Well, on this note, dear fans and subscribers, your host Ram is about to depart now. Thanks for your company and thanks for watching uh, Cricket Happenings. And thanks for all your contributions uh, to this uh, Cricket Happening show. And one uh, note to everybody, uh, to the Reddit uh, uh, subscribers and friends who have been uh, subscribing in a great manner as far as my show is concerned and they also love the show so thank you very much uh, dear friends subscribers so what I'm going to do uh, yes for sure I'm I'm planning to actually log into reddit.com uh, I have, lo have a look at the site uh, and I will be logging in uh, today uh, and seeing uh, I, I mean I'll try my best at least I'll get logged in and I'll be a part of reddit too so dear fans and subscribers uh, keep an eye uh, on this cricket happening show as usual. Your host Ram will be there to see you tomorrow. Thank you.